You probably already know that Russell Brunson is one of the most elite level marketers and salespeople in our industry. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly one of the biggest, if not most effective techniques that he uses and other elite salespeople and elite marketers use to be able to convert like crazy. And so even if you're doing phone sales and you're a phone salesperson, what I'm about to tell you is going to be tremendously important. Or if you're a copywriter and writing sales copy, uh, this is also tremendously important. Here's the deal. There's essentially two sales you have to make on every sales call. There's a sale in, and in every sales letter too, if you're writing copy or every sales presentation, right? Two sales you have to make on every sale. There's a sale on the method and the sale on the product. So let's take Russell for example. If you look at his 10X Growth Con 2 speech where he sold a tremendous amount of money at uh, Grant's event, or a tremendous amount of product at Grant's event, made a tremendous amount of money. He, doesn't, he takes about 80 to 90% of the time talking about funnels, right? Talking about the method talking about why funnels is the easiest, most effective, fastest way to get customers online. Then only 10 to 20% of the presentation is on click funnels, right? Well, no, why is that? Because if you're like a business owner and, and you know, particularly a lot of people in that group were not advanced marketers. They were like, uh, you know, like kind of like salespeople or like brick and mortars and stuff like that. But because if you believe funnels is the most easiest, effective, best way to get customers online, by the nature of believing that belief, guess what you do? You probably buy click funnels. And so it makes the sale on the product much easier when you focus on the sale and the method. So he spends 80 to 90% of the time not selling you on ClickFunnels, but selling you on why funnels is the easiest, most effective, fastest way to get customers online. Because by, again, believing that belief, it's very easy for that to lead to, okay, I'm gonna buy ClickFunnels. There just needs to be a little bit of selling at the end. You know, one of my mentors, Todd Brown, calls this, that 80 to 90% selling on the method is really called marketing. And then sales is just the selling on the product, right? Selling on the features, benefits, advantages, etc. So let me give you another example. And again, this would work in sales calls. And I'm going to kind of bring it back to how I would use it on a sales call at the end. But this is also very prevalent in sales copy, obviously. Another example is with the ketogenic diet. If you read a great direct response sales letter with the ketogenic diet or even intermittent fasting, right? That's another one that's, that's pretty recent. But with the ketogenic diet, it's very easy, right? So the most of the sales letter, 80 to 90%, it's gonna talk about why the real reason why you couldn't lose weight is because of what's called insulin resistance. And by getting in a state of ketosis, you're able to you know, bypass that insulin resistance problem and be able to only exclusively burn fat and you know, eventually uh, reach your, your weight loss goals, right? So essentially that first belief with that ketogenic diet sales letter is that getting in a state of ketosis is the easiest, most effective, fastest way to be able to lose weight. And if you believe that belief, if 80 to 90% of your time is built on building all of these, uh, you know, really making that 100% concrete of a belief, it's very easy to sell your $37 program or maybe it's your $5,000 coaching program on, you know, doing coaching with the ketogenic diet and working with a ketogenic diet specialist or something, right? So it's very, very easy to do that once they believe the belief they need to be true to be able to buy. Right, and so here's the deal with this belief, and I, I haven't heard anybody else say this but me, is your method, right, that first sale, the sale on the method, right, the sale on funnels, the sale on, you know, ketosis, right, essentially what that should be is by the nature of you explaining your method, you should also explain the simultaneous reason why everything the prospect has tried in the past has failed and why this is gonna be different. Okay, I'll repeat that. The simultaneous reason why everything the prospect has tried in the past has failed and why this is gonna be different. So for instance, if you notice how I did the ketogenic diet, I first started by explaining what's called the problem-based mechanism, which is insulin resistance. That's the real reason why they haven't gotten the results in the past. And so then I move on to the solution-based mechanism, which is ketosis, right? So there's those two parts of everything, right? They should also, by the nature of explaining what your method is every single time in your marketing or your sales presentation, they need to understand the real reason why they haven't gotten results in the past and why this is gonna be different. This is so, so key. And on phone sales, it answers the objection of, well, how is this any different? I tried something like this before. If you ever hear that, you're not doing this. And uh, it's very, very key that you build in that logical type of belief through what's called gradualization on your sales calls and in your sales copy. So let me give you another example that I used in phone sales, okay? So in phone sales, what I would do, and this is when I sold for a company called Traffic and Funnels, and, and for, for, for context, back then, um, essentially what was happening is that Facebook ads were huge, right? Facebook ads, it was all about Facebook ads. Uh, now it's kind of like YouTube ads and TikTok ads, right? But back then it was like Facebook ads was like the way to get rich, right? The way to get clients. 
and uh, everybody wanted to know how to do Facebook ads. And so what I would explain to people on the phone, well, first I would start asking questions, understand their business, understand their problems, and kind of get all this information to be able to tee up my first claim that basically the real reason that they haven't been able to get customers online at scale predictably and efficiently is because of their offer, right? And the economics of it and the positioning of it and all of that stuff, right? And once they had the right high ticket offer in place to where they had a unique different superior positioning and they had the right economics, then getting Facebook ads to work is like a byproduct of that. It's very, very easy. Like you don't have to do much. You can just almost run wide open targeting. So this is, you know, and you might hear this now and be like, well, that's not that good. But you gotta understand guys, like this is back when people were trying to sell $37 a month subscriptions, right? Like very, very few people were trying to sell high ticket. So when I would explain to people, they're like, no, like your, your you know, $37 course is stupid. And the real reason why you can't make your ads work is not because of your Facebook ads on your $37 course, it's because of the offer. And you need to have higher pricing, you need to have premium position, you know, all that stuff, right? That you probably am like, duh, duh, you know, but again, you know, back then this was like a big thing. And so you could see how by the nature of me explaining that pitch right there of what we're gonna help them do, which is obviously helping them build out the offer and then some other stuff after that, but you know, helping them build out the offer, by the nature of explaining that pitch, they understand simultaneously the reason why they haven't been able to get customers online in the past and why this is gonna be different. Does that make sense? Okay, so here's the deal. In your sales call, what happens is, I'm, so in sales copy, um, you know, a lot of it, I, I could probably make another video about how to do this in sales copy, but I know a lot of people watch this because of their sales calls, so let's go over that. In your sales call, your information gathering phase is really executing the seven beliefs. I have another video on that, maybe we'll put it up here if you wanna watch it. But your, 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 um, your information gathering phase where you're asking the questions is getting the seven beliefs and getting some preliminary information for you to set up this simultaneous reason why, right? To, to really make your two sales that you have to make. And then what you're doing in your transition is your transition is like the golf tee, your pitch is like the golf ball. So in your transition, you might shed a little bit of insight and break some beliefs and rebuild some new empowering beliefs. They're gonna make your pitch much easily accepted, much more easily accepted once you get into it. So in my transition, when I sold, uh, you know, coaches trying to get customers online who thought their problem was Facebook ads, my transition, would always be about like the real reason why they've been stuck. Hey, I know you think it's this, but can I give you a little bit of coaching? The real reason why you've been stuck is blank. And then I would explain like the logical reason why that's true. I would give social proof, proof reason why that's true. I would give living proof reason why that's true. I would like sell our story. I told client stories. I would get, you know, all of this stuff to where like, I would stack so much proof behind that claim to where it was like undeniable. And then, so I, then I would get a heavy tie down on that. This is all during the transition. Because I knew for the pitch, the first thing I had to sell them on is like, okay, the very first thing we're gonna have to do is rework your offer. That was my pitch. So if they didn't believe that their offer was the problem, they're gonna hear the pitch and hear that we're gonna help them with their offer. And they're gonna be like, well, dude, I, I don't need help with my offer. My offer's fine, I need help with ads. Like, you know, and that's not, their, that's not their real problem. But if I could get them to believe that their offer was the real problem, oh, that's why I haven't been able to get ads to work, then, they're much more easily able to accept the pitch, right? That's why we say the pitch is like the golf ball. The transition phase, or the pre-pitch, I used to call it that, is the golf tee, right? And then so in the pitch, what I would do is I would, again, kind of reinforce, hey, so one, you know, we're gonna work on your offer first. The reason, we're, the reason why this is so important is because what you're doing right now is causing all of these issues to have. It's making you so you can't get customers and all these reasons why. So instead, what we're gonna do is blank, right? And that's kind of the framework for the pitch is, it kind of goes like this. You explain one aspect, like one sort of like thing you're gonna work on. And then you say, so look, one of the biggest mistakes people make out there when they're trying to do X is Y, right? And what happens is that leads to problems and ultimately consequence, right? So I'm, I problem link. Most people out there in the, in the market, they make X mistake and because of that, they experience these problems and ultimately these consequences, right? So I'm problem linking down to a specific behavior, a specific misconception. So instead, what we do is we focus on feature that allows us to benefit and ultimately benefit of that benefit, right? Which is called the advantage, right? That's fully grasping the benefit. So anyways, hopefully that makes sense. It's kind of hard to like pitch you in a template, but that is very, very key because what I'm doing there is creating an us versus them frame 
the reason why most people out there are stuck is because they make this misconception, which leads to all these problems. So instead, what we do, us, is we do, you know, this unique method that allows us to benefit, which ultimately means for you how to fully grasp that benefit, benefit of the benefit. So it's problem link, unique mechanism, uh, benefit link. Hopefully that makes sense. And you know, you, you can't say that exactly. Like it, it can't be too formulaic. Sometimes you gotta kind of mess with it a little bit. But yeah, this worked really well for me. Um, and this is very, very key. It might be a little bit advanced for a lot of people and you know, can be something that you could overthink. But I will tell you, once you do this in your sales copy and then you're also in your, uh, and your sales. Like once you could really do it on the phone, it makes a huge difference. Like I'll tell you this, like a lot of salespeople who suck, oh, they, you know, they complain that, oh, the prospect didn't watch the webinar. Oh, like they didn't watch the pre-call video. And I get it, like you want the prospect to show up believing the method, right? Like that's what they actually are feeling like they're missing when they say that. But if you're really good, you could just build that yourself. And that's how like I just would close anybody. Cause it's like, okay, I don't really care if you have no idea who we are. I'm just gonna like start from the beginning. Whereas at mediocre salespeople, they don't want to make that sale on the method. They only want to make the sale on the product. And realistically for your business, if you are a business owner watching this, you should have a marketing system to where hopefully the prospects are already showing up sold on the method, right? Because in that way, they're the 80 to 90% there. And to use a golf analogy, your salespeople are just kind of like chipping it in or just making like a shorter long-term putt, which is a lot more scalable than trying to, you know, create some black belt judo level salespeople. So anyways, that's it for the day, guys. Hopefully this helped. I will upload this soon. See ya.